Did you know that having high triglycerides could be an early sign of metabolic problems or even heart disease? So you go to the doctor and you get a blood work and they give you a lipid profile and you see that you have high triglycerides. So you might think, huh, but I don't eat fat at all. Well, having high triglycerides could be also correlated with having fatty liver. And you can check everything about fatty liver here in this video. But you might think, I don't eat fat at all. Why do I have high triglycerides? Well, in this video, I want to tell you what's the origin of high triglycerides, how they are formed, how you can diagnose them, what could be the symptoms of having high triglycerides and how you can avoid them. And I want to tell you also about the normal ranges that you can check on your blood work. So let's get started. High triglycerides on a regular basis are ranges that go up from 150. So why do we get high triglycerides? And again, we might think that high triglycerides come from fat because we check that triglycerides are fat. But no, let's stop with humans for a while and let's go again with geese. The food industry have a food that it's called foie gras. Foie gras, it's made, it's fatty liver that comes from geese. And you say fatty liver from geese? Well, they give geese during their life water with sugar, with tons of sugar, and that's all they eat. And they eat that and they eat a lot of corn, a lot of soy, but especially they eat a lot of sugar. Sugar is going to give them fatty liver and they, they're going to die with a lot of triglycerides in their whole body. So that might give you an idea that high triglycerides, they don't come from fat, they come from the excess of carbohydrates, the excess of sugars, the excess of starches, the excess so the, of rice, pasta, potatoes, sweet potatoes, candy, ice cream, bread, whatever. Now, I don't want you to think that carbohydrates are bad. So let's go and see how they are formed. Well, when you eat, if you're going to eat potato, well, potato is full of starches. Starches are chains of glucose that are bound together and they're just holding your hands together. When you put them in your mouth and when they get with the enzymes that we have in our mouth and comes from our pancreas, they break. They break and they, they get through your intestine, they go to your blood. Some of, the, of that sugar, some of that glucose is going to be utilized by your cells, but most of them it's going to go to your liver and then it's going to go to your muscle so you can store them as energy for later in a way that is called glycogen. Why for later? Because if you don't eat for a while, if you are going to wait for a while, if you're going to fast, if you're going to sleep, if you're going to go and train, go on a treadmill, go for a run, then when you're not eating and you end up using that glucose that you had on your cells, then you go to your liver, go to your muscle and you ask for glucose because the body needs glucose and oxygen to build up energy. So that's how we utilize glucose. That's how we use them at first, and that's how we store them when we need more. But what happens if I eat more? If I eat more glucose than the one that I need, which is usually what happens nowadays with humans, what happens? Well, the muscle and the liver cannot store more glycogen than the one that, that they can. It's like your, your pockets. You can try to get a, a lot of money or a lot of whatever and store them in your pockets it's limited the amount of things that you can get there so what happens with the body what you cannot store inside the muscles and inside the liver it's going to be turned into triglycerides triglycerides that are going to end up in your blood in your cheek in your butt in your belly and all over your body those are the triglycerides that are going to end up giving you fatty liver. So you keep on eating and eating and eating and eating six times a day and shifting your glucose and shifting your insulin every time you eat and eating a lot of carbs, eating low in protein, low in fat. So you keep on, on spiking glucose, insulin, and that's going to keep on building up more and more and more triglycerides. And what is that related to? Well, that's related to insulin resistance, diabetes, pre-diabetes, obesity, a bunch of cancers, stroke. Yeah. And most of the diseases that are today, the number one cause of death, that is heart disease. So you might want to think, what are the symptoms of having high triglycerides? Well, they might not be any at all. You might have triglycerides in 
400, 300, 250, and not knowing it. What's the only way of knowing? Go to your doctor. Go to your doctor, get a full blood work, ask him to draw a full lipid profile, and check on your triglycerides. When you check on your triglycerides, how are you gonna know if they're high or not? Is it only by seeing the normal values, or is it any other way? I wanna tell you there is another way. So the way is go and see the value. So let's say you have 100. So you might check, oh, 100 is fine because my the, the range, is, it's within 50 and 150. But no, you're going to take that 100 and you're going to take another value, which is the HDL. HDL is high density lipoprotein. It's a protein that carries cholesterol on the inside. It's what people call wrong, very wrong, good cholesterol because it's not like that, but that's not the topic of this video. So you're gonna take the value of the triglycerides and you're gonna divide that into the value of the HDL. So for instance, you have 100. Then you're gonna take the value of the HDL and HDL of 35, that's gonna give you like three or 2.8. Ranges above two shows you that you have an abnormal range within those two values and that maybe you can have more risk of cardiovascular disease of heart attacks of strokes that you might have insulin resistance and it's something that it's very accepted today all around the world to check that ratio in between those two the ratio should be under two ideal over one so what's over one that you have triglycerides of 60 and you have an hdl of 60 because remember Having an HDL could be a sign that things are going well in your body. There is, it's not a sign that you want to do a bunch of things just to get more HDL. No, you don't want to be eating things to raise your HDL just because of it. You want to do, have a lifestyle that gives you a higher HDL. So if you have a good HDL and if you have a ratio of triglycerides to HDL that goes in between one and two, things are going good. So remember, don't go just by seeing the range, just a normal range, like between 50 and 150. No. But if you're, if you're within 50 and 150, take that value divided by the number of HDL and that ratio should be under two. If you have that, you're in a good way. If not, start doing things and I'm going to tell you how to avoid it. And we're going to make a video these days that's going to show you how to lower your triglycerides in a natural way but a scientific way and something that you can do on a regular basis you or someone that you know that have a high triglyceride level maybe you went to your doctor you checked on your blood test you you saw your triglycerides and you have a normal value but you say i want to avoid that what is a better way to avoid having high triglycerides well it's very easy and i just told you how they are built the first thing is take care of your diet take care of the excess of starches sugars flours ice cream all the excess of carbohydrates if you want to eat good carbohydrates eat, eat veggies but the rest they need to be consumed the way the proper weight that you require but not more and also please train do exercise go out run go for a run climb lift weights please train whatever you want but train when you're training you're building muscle you have more space for glycogen you're consuming more energy you're not going to store energy and you're not going to be building energy that you don't need to be stored so if you want to take care and avoid it take care of your diet and train train a good way train on a regular basis three or four or five times a week if you do that it's probably very very improbable that you're going to end up with high triglycerides. If you're doing that, if you have levels of 800, 1,000, that might, that might be a genetic condition, but that's very, very different. That's maybe less than 1% of the cases. Most of the people that have high triglycerides, it's not because, oh, my granny had high triglycerides. So I have 200 and my granny had 200 as well. Well, your granny was eating too much sugar and you're eating eating too much sugar as well so she might you might teach her how to lower her triglycerides and you might start lowering yours today 
So before leaving, I want to please ask you a favor and it's to share this video with the people that you might think that it might be helpful or necessary. And remember just to give us a like and hit the here, the subscribe button and the bell so we can tell you every time that we'll make a new video. Thank <laughs> you.